<clears throat> Hi, fellow Ambalanders, greetings. Uh, greetings to everyone watching. Greetings to my brothers, my sisters, my uncles, and everyone. Fellow Ambalanders, we are all present. Uh, thank you very much, Pa Nips. <laughs> pa Nips, thank you very much. Uh, Nana Ju, thanks for coming on live. A couple of people who are very much eager to listen to the Ambazonia calling. A couple of people who are very much eager to listen to the Ambazonia contender calling. A couple of people who are very much eager to listen to the spokesperson of the Ambazonia Defense Forces. Yeah, greetings. Uh, today I will not be broadcasting from home. I'm broadcasting from a travel trip. I am here to give you a very short message. A very short message because of a lot of things that have been going on for the past few days in Ambazonia. Ambazonians, I have one message for all of us. At this stage of the struggle, I can confirm and I can assert with all certainty that we are winning. There has been a very big diplomatic stride taken off by the Ambazonia Governing Council called the Ambazonia Egg of Sea. Egg of Sea on the 1st, on the 10th and the 11th of this month, April. 10th and in the 11th of this month, April will be meeting with the EU, members of the European Union, Parliament, with EU in Brussels, in Europe. This is the biggest diplomatic move ever taken in our struggle since the start of the struggle, in fact, since the colonial period. This is the biggest move taken by the Ambazonia Governing Council. I am not a spokesperson of the Ambazonia Governing Council, but I look forward to this day, the 10th and the 11th of April. That means in the next seven days or so, you will be listening to Ambazonia being debated in the EU headquarters in Brussels in Europe. And just to inform you, the EU invited the Ambazonia Governing Council. Well, I am coming here today to project power to project the unity we've had so far in this struggle. The unity goes beyond bounds. In fact, the unity has been massive and has been explosive. We've been invited uh, by the European Union, not because we keep changing our names from Egg of Sea to Egg of Sea and all of this ska, 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 and the SCLC and all of those, no. We've been invited because we've projected power so far on ground zero. We've united all the forces on Ground Zero. We've united every single Ambazonian to look on Ground Zero. We've united the world to look at Ground Zero and how we arm Ground Zero. Our people of Ambazonia have stood firm for the past 58 years, not to advocate for long-lasting peace. There is nothing, and I repeat, I have heard a lady speaking at the SCLC or whatever they call the Washington Conference, begging for peace. We are not begging for peace. There is nothing like long-lasting peace. There shall be and there shall only be long-lasting resistance. There shall be and there shall only be long-lasting fight. There shall be and there shall only be long-lasting defense. There shall be and there shall only be long-lasting fight against La Republic du Cameroon terrorists. We are ready for fight. We are not ready for peace. Because if you want peace, you must prepare for war. We are ready for war. Because we want war with La Republic du Cameroon. We've given La Republic du Cameroon 58 years of our lives begging for peace from them. And they've killed us, they've rubbished us, they've destroyed our destinies. We've given La Republic du Cameroon 58 years of our suffering and pain, and they've destroyed all of our livelihoods. We've given La Republic du Cameroon more than half a century of peace, and here someone comes to still beg for peace. 
We are not begging for peace with La Republic du Cameroon, no. We are not here to entertain the international community with words like peace, no. We are not here to entertain international communities with words like conflict resolution, no. We are not here to entertain the international community with words that would please their ears like peace and peace, no. We are here to stress on the article or chapter 7 of the United Nations Charter of 1945, defense. We are here to articulate our plight to fight, not peace, no. We are here to fight and we shall arm our boys to the teeth. Whosoever sat at the Washington conference or so-called Maryland conference and was calling for peace, you are useless and you are stupid. You are stupid in your head. We are calling for serious armed defense on ground zero. Arm your boys to the teeth. I mean, arm everybody to the teeth. The only time we shall call for peace would be when every Amazonian has one AK-47 and one pistol. As of now, not everybody has those. We shall arm everyone with one AK and one AK-47. And there we shall call for peace. So when you sit in Maryland and you are talking at a conference and begging for peace, you are making some of us look useless and hopeless. We are not begging for this war to end. We are begging for our international partners to arm us, to arm us to fight terrorism. We have never ever heard La Republic du Cameroon begging for peace. No, they keep arming their own soldiers and fighting. We are at war and those at war must fight. We are not begging for peace. The only people who can beg for peace would be the international community. And that is the only person that can come to separate these two fighters. We are begging for contenderhood. You have to arm our boys to the teeth. If you are a lady, as you were sitting there, one so-called Sally, a silly Sally, sitting in Maryland and begging for peace, begging for peace that we should join La Republic du Cameroon and end this nonsense. Oh no, you are wasting your time. Go to Yaoundé and make that speech. Don't come to the diaspora and make the speech. If you want to beg for peace, go to Yaoundé where they call Palais de Congrès and beg for that peace. When you sit in the diaspora among us, we don't want to hear those words like peace. We want to hear words like arming our boys to the teeth and fighting to the teeth and fighting La Republique du Cameroon to the ground. That is what we should be hearing. The women have died. Mothers like Mami Api are not happy in their graves. Mothers like all of those women who have been chopped off, their breasts have been cut off, their hands, their limbs. They are not happy if we are ending this struggle with peace. They are happy if we end this struggle with one man, one AK-47. If you are not ready to arm your boys to the teeth, please back off from this revolution. If this re revolution don't tire you, Come out for this revolution. Go find place you should If this revolution don't tire you, know the whole conference by conference. Because by the time you leave from that conference, you will come to meet us. The rebels still arming our boys and fighting. We shall buy guns and buy only guns. We shall buy arms and buy only arms. We shall buy everything that will include weapons to fight La Republic du Cameroon terrorists. I repeat, you are stupid in the head if you're calling for peace as you sit in Maryland and you're begging for peace with La Republic du Cameroon. You are stupid, I repeat, without any remorse. If you vex any man, make it go hang. You are stupid, and I repeat, you are stupid in the head. We are not begging for peace with La Republic du Cameroon. I want to insist on that. We are not begging for peace with La Republic du Cameroon. We dashed them 57 or 58 years of peace and we had in return death. We dashed them 58 years of suffering, of slavery and we had in return death. We dashed them our lives and we had in return death. My fellow Amazonians, we are not here to beg for peace with anyone who thinks we are weak. We are here to arm our boys to the ground. Arm our boys to the teeth. You cannot be holding conferences while people on the ground are still being killed by the same people. You think you can beg for peace from them. 
La République du Cameroun has never begged for peace. You must understand the strategy of warfare. You must understand the strategy when it comes to military strategy on the ground. Don't rubbish our efforts with useless conferences abroad. Don't rubbish our efforts with useless conferences in the name of unity or whatever. Don't rubbish our efforts. If you want to sit on any platform of unity, you should have a resolution. And your resolution one should clearly state that you are arming all your citizens to the teeth to fight terrorism. When you come out with a six-page document and your document cannot enlist that you can arm your own citizens to fight terrorism, then you are a La Republic du Cameroon agent. Every government, every citizen, every country arms its own citizens to the teeth and are proud to announce that they are arming their citizens to fight terrorism. Why is our own case different? Why should so-called leaders sit together, including a defense leader, and they are afraid to call the word AK-47 on a resolution? When has a gun become a crime in this country? When has a gun become a crime in the international community? Yet we have so-called leaders who call themselves for defense, but they cannot articulate even one point on arming their citizens to fight terrorism. We are not fighting a simple war. We are not fighting against civilians. We are fighting against terrorists. And if your so-called leaders, six of them, can sit among a population and cannot roll out a single point to say, arm Ambazonians to the teeth with guns, with guns, with bullets to fight terrorists, then those are not, those are not leaders. I am saying it here in the name of Tapang Ivo Tanku, the Ambazonia Defense Force spokesman. I am telling you, Ambazonians, there is only one thing that will take you out of Ambazonia. Clean, on a clean slate. It is guns. Forget about useless conferences. Guns will take you out of Ambazonia free as an independent people. The people who advocated for AK-47s are now begging for peace. Those founders of AK-47s are now begging for peace with La Republic du Cameroon. Those people who brought us to this point where we are now standing and advocating for peace, advocating for guns, are now begging for peace. Those people whom we named them, who we nicknamed them, AK-47, Aquangas and the rest, are the ones now standing and begging for peace with La Republic du Cameroon. Those are the same leaders who told us it is only guns that can save us. But yet, they sit together and pen a resolution. And those resolutions have nothing to do with guns on the ground to protect their own civilians. How do you intend to protect your civilians by drafting out committees that don't include self-defense? How do you intend to protect your civilians and your homeland by drafting out committees, political committees, financial committees, economic uh, committees? How will political committee, committees, financial committees, economic com committees or whatever communications, how will they liberate your people? Will they shoot the bullets? Will communications fire bullets? Will economic fire bullets? If you are here to sell out the struggle, Tapang Ivo will stop you. We are the vanguards of this revolution. We are the people holding this revolution to its teeth. We shall not attend conferences with criminals. We shall not attend conferences with people who think they want to take this revolution for a ride in a, for a walk in the park. Believe me or not, Amazonians, we have a genuine case. If your so-called leaders cannot sit and tell you straight in the face that you should arm your citizens to fight terrorists, tell those leaders, idiots. Tapang Ivo has said it. This is a revolution. I am not here to make a political name. I am not here to clean an image. I am not running for any political post. I am a rebel. And a rebel is someone who is ready to dirty himself to free the people. My people are in mud. And for me to get into mud to free my people, I must be ready to dirty myself. I am a rebel. I am not a political weak. 
I am not a political bigwig to stand and protest or to stand and clean an image. I will dirty myself if it means liberating you. I will dirty myself to the mud if it means taking you out from that dungeon and wiping you away from the eyes of those criminals who sit and draft a six-page document. And none of those committees include self-defense. None of those committees include arming people, their own citizens on the ground. Hush. And the most important thing for us right now, arm our citizens. Any conference that does not discuss arms to our own citizens is not for your integrity. It is a La Republic du Cameroon sponsored conference. Any conference that denies to articulate arming their own citizens to fight terrorism, it is not for your integrity. My people, every citizen in the world, every country in the world, every parliament in the world discusses arms. Every country in the world gives its biggest budgetary allocation to defense. Every country in the world is proud of its military. Every country in the world is proud of its defense forces. It is only in Amazonia, only in Amazonia, that leaders will sit and not even discuss defense and are shy to talk about defense. It is only in Amazonia that so-called leaders will sit, gather around a table for three days, roll out a six-page document, and are afraid to call the word a gun to arm their own citizens. Those are not leaders. Open your eyes. Those are not leaders. We are sitting in the same United States, and this is the same rebel, Tapang Ivo, talking about arming your own citizens. Yet, you have six leaders sitting together. None of them can call the word a gun and can even articulate or even beg that we should buy guns to arm our own citizens. La Republic du Cameroon is on a frenzy, begging everyone to buy guns to arm their army. Why are we shy to arm our own armies? Why are we shy to call a gun a gun? When has a gun become a crime? I am sitting here in front of a gun shop. I am sitting here in front of a gun shop. That is a gun shop here. That is a gun shop. I am sitting here in front of a gun shop. That is it. If you can look at it, the right is a gun shop. Zoom it out. It's a gun shop. That is it. Gun shop. I am sitting here in front of a gun shop. And yet, we have people, silly leaders, who cannot even buy a gun. In the U.S., a gun is a right. If you are mature, you can buy your gun and own your gun. Ambazonia, if we have declared our country our country, and we have said our citizens have gun rights, it is our right to articulate the right to bear arms, to fight against these rogue terrorists. It is a disappointment that we have so-called leaders. I am sorry, I always praise Akwanga because I consider him as my father. But send him this message. Akwanga, you were the one who said we should buy guns. You were the ones who made us become rebels. You were the one who transformed Tapang the Federalist to a rebel, to a radical rebel, to fight terrorism. You were the ones who associated your name, AK-47, to AK Akwanga. Yet, you are turning your back on your people by not signing and not endorsing guns on a so-called paper tiger resolution. Why can you sit among six leaders, federalists, and you are afraid to call the word a gun on a resolution? How would that resolution, resolution liberate you from the claws of the tigers? How would they liberate you? My people, they always said it was Moses that took the Israelites out of Egypt. But it was not Moses who took the people into the promised land. If Akwanga could take us out of federalism into guns, it may not be him who would take us into that promised land. We have rebels that have come up. These rebels like myself will advocate for guns till the end of time. Till the day I am shot with a bullet in my head. 
Nagitibor, Nagitibor, U.S. ambassador, the representative of Donald Trump, said with his own mouth, no Amazonian shall be as incarcerated abroad. No Cameroonian, in his own word, shall be arrested abroad if they don't violate the U.S. laws. We have never violated the U.S. laws. Our records are very clean. Why are you afraid to call a gun a gun? To call a gun a gun in the United States is not a crime. It is a right. I can shout it anywhere. It is a right. It is a second amendment right. The gun shops are available everywhere. You can literally walk in by yours and go out. Why is Ambazonia different? Why are your leaders afraid? Ask that question. How can you be a president and you are afraid to call a gun a gun? How can you be a president and you are afraid to call a gun to your citizens to arm themselves to fight terrorism? And you call yourself a leader. You sit among a group of criminals in Maryland for three days. You put, you put out a six-page document, but yet none of those documents articulate the right of your own soldiers on the ground to bear arms to fight. You are basically trying to scam the people with more money. You are basically a scammer. You are basically trying to scam the people even more. We shall not accept. And that is how South Africa has become a dungeon. Africa has become a dungeon for its own people to fight among themselves. Because we have stupid leaders who want to please the West and not please Africans. We have to start understanding that our mindset is that of an African. Who has to please an African man first before the white man. You cannot be sitting among whites and you are afraid to call a gun a gun when those same whites are using and even having guns with them in their own homes to protect themselves. What are you afraid of? What are you shy of? We've always said this revolution is not for pastors. If you want to be a pastor, go to church. I am a vocal person. I'm someone who does not hide my feelings. If it pains me, I say it as it is. <coughs> This revolution is not for pastors. I am not here to entertain anyone. If you feel I'm here to entertain anyone you live, I'm here to tell you what I do, what the Ambazonia Governing Council does, and what the ADF does. If you want to follow pastors, follow pastors. If the EU, knowing that Akwanga, Ayaba rather, Ayaba is the one who called out and said he killed gendarmes, in April, he was the first people to first person to order the killing of gendarmes. When two gendarmes went down, the international community interviewed Ayaba. Ayaba said, I killed the gendarmes. The same Ayaba who spoke on the media, quoted everywhere that he was the first to have killed gendarmes, is the one who has been invited, who has been invited to speak on behalf of the Ambazonians at the EU. On the 10th and the 11th of this month. Just to tell you. To advocate for guns. Is not a crime. To fight and kill terrorist gendarmes. Is not a crime. If your leaders are afraid to call a spade a spade. Tell them they are not your leaders. Don't be afraid. Those useless bloggers. Who keep promoting presidents. In a revolutionary struggle. Tell those useless bloggers to take their time. And to mark their time. Those useless bloggers who keep promoting individuals as presidents and not as rebels. Tell them to mark their time. That Tapang Ivo, this is his time to speak out. To expose those ills. We have tolerated enough. And we shall not tolerate enough anymore. When your so-called leaders group together to raise $50 as entry fee into a hall. On behalf of those who have died on ground zero, you are milking money out of people's sweat and blood. That money will rope around your neck. Ambazonians, we shall build a country where your gate, your entry fee is free. We shall build a country where you can attend meetings. As long as those meetings are in the name of Ambazonians, you shall attend those meetings free. 
We shall build a country where you can participate, you can practice your 1966 International Covenant of Civil and Political Rights and the same 1966 International Covenant on Social, Economic and Cultural Rights. You shall practice those rights freely without paying $50. Anything in the name of Amazonia must not be sold. That is how Jesus Christ was sold for 20 or 30 pieces of silver. That is how Joseph's brothers sold him for 20 pieces of silver. Ambazonia, you shall not be sold. No one shall put a price tag on your head. No one shall prevent you, poor Ambazonians, from attending meetings on your own. On your own name. How can you pay $50 to attend a meeting on your name? If organizers cannot hold open door meetings, let them not hold paid for closed door meetings. If Ambazonians are asked to pay $50 to get into a meeting abroad, you shall be asked to pay $3 million as your trip to Boya. Open your eyes. No be tapang eye, go can open your eye. Open your eyes. No be me, I go can force and for open your eyes. If Ambazonians have been asked to pay $50 now, you shall pay $2 million the day you shall be given independence to go into Boya. Those criminals, those gray-haired pastors, gray-haired former journalists, gray-haired leaders, be very careful as you engage in scams against Ambazonians. Be very, very careful. The youth of today have risen. The old people, if the kitchen is too hot, go out, pack fine, and listen to us speak. You had your time. You tried your best, and your best was best enough. Allow us, your sons, to run this revolution as rebels. Allow us to run this thing as rebels. You were former SDF politicians. SDF politicians now leading the struggle. John Baakuro. Who was a boy boy for the minister Ngole Ngole? He is now the one running a fake consortium. Degash, leave this struggle and let us, the rebels, lead this thing. We are now the rebels. If you are not a rebel, you leave from one side and let us take this thing to the end. We have a clear shot. We have a clear shot in sight. Please, guys, open your eyes. I'm not here to entertain anyone. The only one that shall take you to re the revolution to the end is one thing, a gun. Only a gun can save your people back home. Politics abroad will not save your mother who has no chance of coming abroad. Politics abroad will never ever save your relatives whom you are struggling to leave from Cameroon to abroad. Politics in Maryland will endanger the lives of your relatives back home. The only thing that will keep your lives safe will be guns. Buy your mother a gun to fight and shoot at the door when a terrorist comes knocking. If your mother is armless, she will be slaughtered like a goat. If your mother is armless, she will be slaughtered like a goat. I can bet you on this. You've seen photos. If your brother back home is armless, she will be, he will be slaughtered like a pig. At least before he dies. Let him shoot one terrorist. Buy that gun for your brother. Buy that gun for your sister. We are at war. We don't play politics at war. South Sudan struggled to be where it is today. If South Sudan could have struggled for 31 years. Guys, we have a clear case. Don't give the international community a doubt that we are confused because we keep changing names from Skakuf to IG to Skapak to SCLC to this next month or in the next three months we shall change that SCLC again to another name and to Scoop. Why are we confused? We are giving the impression to the international community that we have bad dogs. Bad dogs because we keep giving a dog a bad name to hang it. We keep changing those names because we want to hang the dogs. So there is no trust among Amazonians because they keep changing the names of so-called governing councils or authorities. The only names that have been consistent so far from day one till now 
has been the AGC and the Amazonian Defense Forces. Morris has changed his name to ARC. Morris changed it to ARC. IG changed his own from Skakuf to Skapak to Skakum to all the Skakum and now SCLC. Akwanga has changed his own from Southern uh, SCYL to some um, Ambas uh, African Liberation Movement. All those names keep changing. But one thing is consistent in this struggle. From one name I know, it is the AGC, the ADF. Open your eyes and look at it. And ask yourself, if you were the international community, whom will you call to the table to speak with? Ask yourself, consistency is part of international reciprocity. Ask yourself, if you were the international community, whom will you call to sit and dialogue with? Guys, open your eyes. I'm not here to give you lectures. I am here to open your brains. So you see clearly the message I'm telling you. When you have leaders who were called AK-47 Akwangas, and the same leaders are now begging for international peace, international peace with La Republic, start asking yourselves if you're on the right senses. When you have leaders who sit together, eight of them in a hall, None of them can recognize that a flag is not in the hall. Ask yourselves, who, if those leaders are working for national interest or private interest. When you have leaders, including a so-called president, who sits in the hall for a whole day and does not recognize that his flag is not in that hall. Ask yourself, if those leaders drank a 4-4 before coming into that hall. When you have leaders who sit in the hall, and who are advocating for an Ambazonia with guns, but cannot see and recognize that even a flag is not present in a hall. Ask yourselves if they have been compromised or not. My fellow Ambazonians, if you cannot ask the right questions at the right time, you will be taken out by the gun at the wrong time. If you cannot ask the right questions at the right time, what happened to our ancestors will happen to you. I am not afraid of anyone. I will speak the truth and I will question power. I'm not afraid of any human being on earth or in the abroad or, ab or back and ground zero. Guys, open your eyes. Not before entertain people. Now for make a make one understand say this struggle. Not be struggle whether they take and play with them. Now for make a more understand say leaders they don't change position for this struggle. Now for make a moon, I understand, say, they won't go hide their money under so-called groups. Now for make a moon, I understand, understand, say, international community, they see the struggle different from the way we're going to I don't talk this thing, I don't tire, and I go talk again. I'll be sorry, say, I get bad voice. I get wound inside my throat, and I know if it come every day, they talk. But the small voice, whether God don't give me, I go still come, they talk for one. I want a moon, I open her eyes. When I go ask the right questions to those so-called leaders, when I go ask Sako Ikome, when I go ask them, some people they say, man, know the call names. I know the call names because I want to criticize. I'm critiquing. Critiquing means that you give a, a problem and you give solutions. When you fail to critique your leaders, you are encouraging a democratur. A democratur. That means a dictatorship and a democracy merge together. When you fail to question your leaders, you are encouraging a dictatorship in that Africa. And that is why Africa does not progress. Because you want to protect your leaders. You are afraid to call the name of your leaders. You think it's a shame. No, it is not a shame to call the name of your leaders. Call them out. Call those gangsters out. It is not a shame in Africa to call the name of your leaders and hit them to the nail. Call those gangster leaders out. If you can call Paul Bia, you can call your own so-called Sako. If you can call Paul Bia, you can call Ayaba. If you can call Atanganji, you can call Tapang Ivo. Feel free at any point to call my name, guys. That is part of democracy. Feel free at any point to call my name. I will never ever stand and tell people not to criticize me. Never. It is part of democracy. If you see me going wrong, call my name. If I see you going wrong, I will call your name out. I am speaking particularly to those organizers of the Washington Conference or so-called Maryland Conference and to Akwanga 
and to Bo Herbert and to uh, John Baakuro and to Saku Ikome, that gang, I'm speaking to that gang. Open your eyes. The lives of our people have been lost. And if we sit quiet, all lives will be diminished. All lives matter. When I say things, it happens two years after I have said them. Not because I'm a politician. It's because I speak the facts. When I tell you things, they happen after two years. And you come to say Ivo was right. No. It was you who was wrong. And your brain is now right. I'm telling all those bloggers. And I want to hereby announce. Sorry, I'm not feeling fine. For the past two weeks, I've not been okay. And I want to tell all of, all of those bloggers. For the past two weeks, uh, not rather, all of those bloggers, we've listened to Ambazonia calling. And I have decided with permission from the AG, AGC and ADF that I will be running a special broadcast. I am now wearing back my broadcast journalism cloak. This Saturday, we are rolling out Ambazonia contender. You can call it Ambazonia calling. It will be a 26-minute broadcast. Every Saturday, it shall be released. High-quality audio edited with five reporters. High-quality BBC standard. I am bringing back my CNN standard and my BBC experience. After working as a correspondent for BBC Africa, I am bringing all back on board. This Saturday, we are launching our first podcast, our magazine program. It will be called, we are still debating on the name. It will be called Ambazonia Contender. I will be the main anchor and presenter. I will be the main magazine anchor. And we shall have a couple of people, five, two ladies, three men. And we shall have a special package for you guys. Because we've realized people are taking the name of journalism and running it in the mud. We shall teach those old journalists, those CPDMs, CP, SDF uh, reporters, we shall teach them what we call journalism. We shall teach them what we call journalism. And we shall teach them what we call embedded journalism. Because we are not doing a balanced journalism, we are doing an embedded journalism. We are now in a military warfare. Any journalist who is attached to a military is an embedded journalist. And that is why we are transforming this struggle into all forms of tenets, including embedded journalism. Feel free, if you have a good, broadcast, a, a good broadcast voice, reach out to me. If we vet your voice and it's right, we shall give you those scripts to read. We are the script writers. We only need broadcast voice, or voices. I still insist, at this stage of the re revolution, we are arming every Amazonian to the teeth. If you are a leader, and you don't care about army Amazonians. You are wasting your time. If you sit in Maryland. And you think you are ashamed to call a gun a gun. In front of so called whites. Whites with white skin. Are you afraid of the white skin? You, because your own skin black. Call a gun a gun. I sat with my classmates. Who are now working for the FBI and the White House. We all did political science. Security studies and warfare together and we're calling guns in every of our subjects none of them were ashamed it is only in the ambazonian revolution that a leader wants to enjoy power but is ashamed to call a gun a gun buy guns and give your citizens to fight for themselves buy guns buy guns i've not said something buy guns weapons and give your citizens to fight terrorism buy guns anything else is nonsense when you roll out a resolution there is one key point you don't need a communications department no we are not running a country we don't have a country you don't need a political department no you want to introduce politics in the revolution to kill it we don't need an economic department no we don't have institutions for economics you want to simply run a scam in the name of economic department we need one department in this revolution. One. And that department is the Department of Defense. We need one source of funding. Buy guns. All the money should go for guns. Ayabacho Lucas, last week, ordered his entourage to pay their flights to go to Dublin. 
Everyone, including Shea Kavu, one million paid his flight. Nobody paid his flight from the coffers of the AGC or the ADF. The money have all been sent to Ground Zero to buy guns. Ayabacho Lucas ordered his entourage to be in Spain, in Basque, to present last week for three days. They paid their flights from their pockets. Capo Daniel left from Asia to Europe from his pockets. And he paid his flight for Amazonians. The money we have in the coffers could have paid those flights. But we said no. The money goes to ground zero for guns. They slept in people's houses. Your so-called leaders who were in Basque, in Spain, slept in people's houses. They couldn't afford hotels. They couldn't afford hotels. That is what we call sacrifice. They attended a meeting in Basque Parliament with taxis. They hired taxis to drop them. Yet, we have leaders who want to drive in Cadillacs, who want to drive in Rolls Royce, who want to drive in limousines, so-called leaders who don't have a country. How will the whites take you serious? How will a white man take you serious? How will a white man look at you and say, is this the leader whose people are dying because of poverty? Ask yourself that question. Communication matters. Visual communication is important in international politics. When a white sees you driving in limousines and that white does not even have the money to afford for a limousine, ask yourself if that white can advocate for your case to be transformed from poverty to wealth. You're already rich. What more do you need? The Bible says if you want to add more, you can add more. How can you fill your cup when your cup is already full? You've already been riding, riding in limousines and you're begging whites to help you. How do you want to fill your basket when your basket is already full? Present yourself to the white man in absolute humility and poverty. Do I need to tell you this? You are an old head. You have gray hair. You should be mature to reason. Present yourself as a pauper to a poor man. And that poor man and that white man will transform you from a poor man to a rich man. Will give you the Ambazonia you want to see. But when you want to present yourself as a rich president in front of a white man, he will not take you serious. You're already rich. When Akon went to Africa and decided to give electricity to Africa, it's because he saw that Africa had no lights. If he went to Africa and saw that Africa had electricity, he couldn't have been more motivated. Why would I walk on the streets of America and give a dollar to somebody who is riding in a limousine? Whereas I see someone who is begging, an African-American begging a dollar in poverty, sleeping in snow. Why should I not give that African-American a dollar? Why should I give a you in a limousine begging me for money? Open your eyes. And no the senses they don't come off on a head because of the one politics. Open your eyes and ask the right questions. You shall get the right answers. If you want to be angry with Tapang, to hell with you. To hell! I'm not here for any politics. So people that say, oh, Ivo, no, make us so because you're a leader. I am a rebel. I'm not a leader. I am a rebel. I am a black hat. I'm a rebel. I'm not a leader, please. If you want to go for go and meet those so-called leaders in Maryland. I am a rebel. Put it clear in your head. A rebel is somebody who is ready to go dirty to save you. I'm not here to, to fix a name. The day we shall get into, into Ambazonia, you will see another Tapang. Tapang now the responsible politician. For now, I am a dirty rebel. I am a rebel. Re, real rebel. Okay? So I'm not here to entertain people. I'm not here to make faces. I'm not running for any president kind of nonsense. If you want to run for president, go, for, go, go run for White House. For now, we have people who have died on ground zero. And if it means I should be very hard on some of those idiots, I will be as hard as possible, as hard as possible on those idiots. Very, very hard. Not erectile hard, but very one, the real erectile hard. The one that will give you a revolutionary orgasm.
That is the kind of rebel I have to be. To put senses into idiot heads. The fact that you get gray hair. It doesn't mean you're wiser. Some of that gray hair now are stress. Stress from dullness. They give you simple answer. You know if you answer them. You start to think, 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 think. One plus one or two. You know if you answer them. But you want to think. That thinking too much gives you stress. And that is why you grow gray hair. Gray hair for dullness. Not for intelligence. My fellow Amazonians. I have much to say, but I will not say much. I want you guys to open your eyes. Those people who fool you to say attend conferences in Berlin, in Maryland, and in this, open your eyes. Ayabacho Lucas now has the best advisors. The best advisors from Africa and Europe, from the United States and Canada. He is well advised. Ayabacho Lucas, the leader of the Amazonian Revolution, now has the best of the advisors. He shall not attend any meeting that cannot articulate for guns. He shall not attend any meetings that does not articulate for guns. If there is no gun on the table, we shall not attend. We are not here to please people. There is no unity. There is strategic collaboration. If you cannot collaborate with us to buy guns, we shall not give you the unity you need, your political unity. Wait until we liberate you. Then you go and for wait until we liberate you before you form political coalitions on ground zero. As of now, what we shall give you will be revolutionary orgasm. We want you to ejaculate revolutionary. We want you to ejaculate with a military orgasm to fill the pores of the revolution. We want to buy the guns for you guys. We don't want to equip our offices, our presidential offices from Maryland. We don't want to use your money to buy papers and office desks and chairs. No. We want to use your money to buy guns. Guns and only guns. Get me clearly. We want to use your money to buy bullets to free your relatives back home. When you have leaders whose wives our francophones start questioning yourself if you have the right leadership because when they go to bed to smile and to sleep with their wives their wives will say si vous voulez entrer ici avec votre ambazonie laissez ça dehors that is why the wife that's why the wives will tell them your so called leaders their, their, their wives will tell you will tell your leaders vous avez vous avez vous êtes amb ambazonie oui Mais si vous voulez entrer ici, laissez votre ambassade dehors. Oui ou non? You have to give one answer. It is not a oui or yes. No, if she is clear. Oui ou non? You have to give one. Fontaine's wife is a Nordist. A Nordist. A Nordist. Your own Fontaine neighbor. Not to say it's a bad man. There is nothing bad in it. But I'm giving you perspectives for you to know exactly whom your leaders are. Every leader, you should be able to know the wife of your leader. It is right. It is not a privacy. You decided to become a public figure. My wife, my own wife is from Guy. My own is from Guy. You have the right to know Karin. You have the right to know her. I will not hide it from her. Ayaba's own is from Ambazonia. You have the right to know people's wives, your leader's wives. It is transparency. You know Obama's wives. You know Donald Trump's wife. You know Kim Jong-un's wife. You know uh, Hillary Clinton's husband. You know Bill Clinton's wife. You know this. Why I, Why don't you know your own Bacalazo Calando Zando? Why don't you know your own leader's wife? Why? Is it a crime? It's not a crime. Ask your leaders who are their wives. You shall open your eyes. Ask your leaders who are their wives. Go and ask Bo Herbert who his wife is. Ask Sako whom his wife is. Ask Akwanga who his wife is. Ask Tapang who his wife is. Ask this who his wife is. You will be shocked at the answers you shall receive. You will be very shocked. And when you are shocked, you shall now understand why people say several things from where they sit. 
There is a great communication scholar at the call, Thomas Friedman or Thomas Friedman. Thomas Friedman wrote a book, The World is Flat. In that book, page 44, he said, where you sit affects what you see. Where you sit affects how you see it and what you see. Where you sit with a francophone wife, it affects how you see the Ambazonian revolution. Where you sit as Dr. Ayaba's wife who died, may her soul rest in peace. Many people don't know about this. Died in the course of this fight. Dr. Ayaba's wife died. Ayaba Cho Lucas died. May her soul rest in blessed memory, in peace. When you have that kind of a man whose wife dies in Cameroon and she cannot even, he cannot even see the body of his wife, you will understand the pain people have in this revolution. The pain people have. When your families are all abroad and enjoying in Virginia, in Maryland, in California, you will never know the pain of people like some of us who are the only people, only human beings to have ever left Cameroon. To have ever left Cameroon in their entire family generation upon generation. Including, excluding grandfathers who were taken as slaves. You will know our pains. You will know the pains of some of us. We have sung this over and over. It's just that we don't want to reveal things in this struggle. But you shall pity. When you start asking the right questions, you shall get the right answers. And you shall understand who your leaders, is, who your, who your leaders are. There is no way you cannot convince me you can nobody in the world can convince me that you can have a girlfriend and that girlfriend does not influence your life. It's a lie. Your girlfriend can either influence you positively or negatively. Your wife, your wife's tribe matters in this revolution. I don't care where you stand. Your wife's tribes matter in this revolution. When you marry a woman, you're not marrying only the woman. You're marrying her entire village. Her brothers, who are all francophones, will come into your house every day to see the person who wants to separate Cameroon. As long as you're married to her, you will be guilty to her entire family. Step back. We have not set on fire for this revolution. Step back. Take a step back. Take a step back and watch us play this game out. Take a step back and watch some of us, the rebels, lead this revolution. Take a step back and watch us play this game. There is no way I can marry a francophone in this struggle. And that francophone will not tell me, say, Ivo, if you want a pretty country, me and you, we're not going to work out because how my family from the other side will take me? How my family will take me from the other side? It is human nature. And they will tell you, see, vous voulez entrer ici? Ici, dessous, dessous, de on a dessous. Si vous voulez entrer ici, dessous, laissez votre ambassade dehors. Simple. You have one option. She has already made kids with you. And if you want to enter ici, El Palaba, laissez votre ambassade. And that is how you become a hypocrite in the bed. And the next day you become an Ambazonian outside. It doesn't work that way. It will not work. Amazonians, I'm not feeling fine. For the past, if you see my body, I'm sweating. I'm sweating a lot. You can see me. I've not been very okay. But I've said, let me come and discuss with you guys. And talk with you guys. And advocate for a real Ambazonia. With real people. With genuine names. With genuine faces. And the fear no man face. I am speaking public speech. Because this is a matter of public concern. And I believe... Everyone should look at his or her consciences or conscience and change. They should look deep inside and change. If we cannot change from inside, we shall never change from outside. We have to change our ways of thinking. Only one solution is left for us in this revolution. It is AK-47. Only one solution is left for us in this age. Only one solution, my brother. I don't go fool now. Now only one solution there. Now gone. May no man fool now say conference go liberate now. No. 
resolution and nonsense. Now gone. If you go for any place, any man, as you say, Ambasonia, what do you need? Tell them you need a gun. Tell them you need a gun to free your people. Tell them your mother needs a gun to fight terrorists. Tell them your uncle is dying in a village because terrorists are encroaching. There's only one way to fight terrorism in this world. It's to arm, to arm the targets. Arm the, ta arm the targets to fight terrorism. The ISIS, the ISIS is being defeated by U.S. or Western-backed military aid. Not food. Food will never defeat terrorists. Politics cannot defeat terrorism. Go and read a paper on the strategies of terrorism by, uh, uh, how they call these two people? Kit. Kit. Awin and Kit. Read them. Uh, an academic research paper. They define five strategies of terrorism. One, altruism. Two, I can name all of them. Five, if you have studied international conflicts, we don't speak because we want to speak. We speak with strategies and facts. Only one thing defeats terrorists. is a gun in the head. A bullet in his head would take out a terrorist. Not rosaries and whatever. Guys, do have a splendid day. Have a nice day.